In the last module, we learned about elimination reactions, which produce alkenes. In this module, we'll learn what alkenes do, what reactions they can undergo. The first such reaction is essentially the reverse of elimination. Recall that elimination involves the removal of a proton, H+, and the leaving group, usually a halogen, from adjacent carbons to form an alkene. Well, if we have an alkene, we can add H plus and a halogen to the two carbons of an alkene. We say that we add HX across the alkene. So how does this work? The frontier molecular orbitals of an alkene are pi cc, its homo, and pi star cc, its lumo. Early in the semester, I said that pi star cc isn't a good acceptor orbital, and that's correct. If some donor came and put electrons into pi star cc, we'd make a carbanion. These are not stable. Carbon doesn't usually like to have a negative charge. So alkenes do not behave as electrophiles. Instead, they always act as nucleophiles. They use their pi cc as a donor orbital. This means that alkenes don't react with other nucleophiles, but they do react with good electrophiles. One of the best sorts of electrophiles are the strong acids, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic acids, collectively referred to as the hydrohalic acids, HX. They give up their proton, H+, to just about anything that can take them, and the alkenes can. The alkene's donor orbital, pi cc, donates into sigma star hx, grabbing onto the proton and kicking out x minus. But now we're in a pickle. Where does that h go? What does it bond to? It doesn't just hang out halfway between the two carbons. It needs to choose one. So let's examine the two possibilities. Because this reaction takes the electrons out of pi cc, we break the pi bond, and use those electrons to make a new sigma bond to H. This leaves behind a carbocation at whichever carbon doesn't get the new hydrogen. So we have two possibilities. The H goes to one carbon and leaves a carbocation at the other spot, or vice versa. Based on your knowledge of the SN1 and E1 reactions, can you identify which is more likely? The more substituted carbocation is more stable, so, it's so it is formed preferentially. And we already know what happens with carbocations. They're hungry for electrons, and the X minus that was produced in the previous step can come and satisfy that carbocation. This reaction is called hydrohalogenation, between an alkene and a hydrohalic acid, and is regioselective. It puts the halogen on the more substituted carbon of the alkene and a hydrogen on the other carbon. It's not stereoselective, though, because the halogen could add to either side of that carbocation's empty p orbital. 